Hey y'all. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be seen by more people than who are subscribed to me or anything. So yes, I am Miss Moss the Boss of Miss Moss the Boss TV. And I'm I'm really like I don't usually try to do videos about like I, I, I kind of try to stay away from actually sitting down and talking about um, certain things and don't get me wrong it's only because at first I thought I was trying to do a channel that I just focused on you know self um, like love in a sense and I kind of wanted to just present me shamelessly being myself and then in addition to that just hoping that through my journey I can inspire others but what I realized is that even though even in my videos at times I am very very honest with my love for being black my love for being a woman um, my love for black people and just all of that great stuff um, I never do like topics solely on that, those kind of things. But last night, um, like at like 1 a.m., so that's literally like this morning, but um, on Twitter, you know, usually because schedules are kind of messed up and I see this video. And granted, I see videos all the time of different types of situations, um, but this this time it was just like, okay, click, what the heck? So I click on the video and I witnessed two cops grab a man, pin him down, um, basically move. His body was low key going under the car. Him sitting there pinned down by two guys and then the guy pulls a gun out to his back and then you hear several shots go off. And this is the execution of Alton Sterling. So at that point, I'm just like, can't even fraud. I'm in the same feeling that I've, I've felt before when many others have um, lost their life to one of our protectors of our society um so i was like you know i'm like rp and i'm like that's crazy that we can watch that on twitter and see that on twitter um we can blatantly see like it was it's just to me at this point how blatantly it it showed to the point where and this is literally me just ranting so i don't care you're going to troll and i'm i'm ready for it i'm ready for all of it but it's just like blatantly, we now see how black people are treated um, in, in the eyes of the law or in, in the eyes of the people who are in charge or placed um, in these positions to protect everyone, to protect everyone. That is what a police job, a police officer's job is to do. If, I, if I'm mistaken, I always believe they were here to protect and serve, and they were here to protect and serve us, the civilians. And it just seems like repeatedly, not seems, it's obvious, that repeatedly, that isn't what goes on. When you are black, you, it, I don't know. It, it doesn't always seem like these police officers are here to serve now we all know there are good cops there are bad cops just like it's good and bad people no matter what the color is but the whole issue is that with these cases the police are never held accountable when are we going to start giving our police officers accountability for the actions that they do to people of color and the whole black lives matter movement is to prove that like we are some type of value. We have a value. We are human, just like you are human. We, we're one of the top um, consumers of this world. Like, 
African Americans are American. I, I, I am one of the people who love my roots. I know my ancestors came from Africa, but at the end of the day, I've never been to Africa. I haven't been anywhere outside of this place. I've always known America because I am American. And when people have ignorant things to say, like go back to Africa, all types of dumb shit, that doesn't even make no fucking sense. Because if you didn't want us here, why bring us here? Why? They ain't been happy since. Go back and watch all that old shit. When they owned us, white folks are some happy white people. They used to waltz and had to smile. Was... Look at them now, they're so depressed and sad. Niggas got away. Let slavery come back tomorrow. Well, they don't want us in their little areas and all that shit. Ain't that funny? Don't want us. Don't want us in their neighborhood. When they own us, we was in their house. <laughs> kind of bullshit is that? Oh, I can't come in the neighborhood. But when you own me, I was warming up your bed. Now there's something wrong with this picture. <laughs> shit. When they own us, we had 12 and 14 jobs. Now that we're free, I'm so sorry. There's no jobs. <laughs> Mad because we got away. Let slavery come back in the mall. They'll be on that porch. Welcome home. Because everything he said is true. And don't get me wrong, and I am keep saying this because there are some amazing white people. There are some amazing Latinas. I believe there is amazing people of all shapes, sizes, and colors. But then it's always, always, always bad people too. And at the end of the day, it's obvious who we value in terms of the justice system. Like if several men who've committed mass terrorist attacks, white men, you easily take their firearms and lock them up and put them to jail and prosecute them and everything else. Why is it that we can't even sell CDs outside of a store where the man who runs the store said it's cool without being shot six or six times? He wasn't hurting nobody. Oh, he had a gun. Well, in this world, in that state, it's legal to carry one. So I'm still confused. It's always some, when people try to justify. And like I said, back to the black on black crime nonsense. Okay. First of all, people on people, black on black, white on white. Um, spirit, what, it happens. That does happen. However, the reason why the black on black crime argument does not work when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement is because of the simple fact that the Black Lives Matter movement is based around police brutality. Police. The police are here to protect and serve our country and the civilians within it, right? So their status in terms of civilian on civilian crime is different because they are the people you call when black on black crime happens. Those are the people you call when problems and murders happen. Those are the people we looking for to keep us safe on, this, on the streets. But if they don't think that we have any value, then who, who are we calling? And you think if we stop killing each other, they'll be like, oh, okay, they don't kill each other um, either, so we'll stop. No, people kill people. White people do it too. You don't see them doing that to them. Spanish people do it too. Like, no one ever, I hate people who make that stupid ass argument. That's not the same. And at the end of the day, with black on black crime, they still make sure they catch somebody. It don't even gotta be the right person. But somebody is going down for the murder if they can find him, okay? What hurt me the most is always the after. Like at the end of the day, these people have families. They have children. He had five kids. Five. His oldest was 15. And publicly, his dad's murder, execution, was, is, it went viral. It's all on Twitter. He's never going to forget that image. He's never going to forget that. That is literally his dad's last moments of his life. And that's going to replay in his head. And when I watched his mom get up there and him stand by her and break down in tears, I could do nothing but cry. Then people say stuff like if black people had daddies in their lives and just all this dumb stuff. All these reasonings that don't make sense. Like none of that stuff makes any sense. 
it's all false it it doesn't add up at all it it's just irrelevant at the end of the day i don't see how people are so easily to justify blatant murders at the end of the day like i don't it fathoms me that we even come to the conclusion to try to figure out a way to justify their action but it, and it's funny because if it was your people's if it was your mom or if it was your dad, or if it was your brother, or your sister, or your cousin, or your aunt, or aunt, or however you want to call it. You would want people to feel like their lives matter too. You would sit there and say, well, why? Well, you had them in handcuffs. You had them down on the ground. It was obvious that they really couldn't get out or, or anything. Why did you have to sit here and kill my family member? But because it's not here at home, it's whatever. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm at a point where I just don't get it. Um, I know for, I feel like, I'm also at a loss of even feeling like they might even be punished for it. I'm at a point where these things happen. And I do agree with people who say this is modern day lynching. Um, where it's a tactic to me. It's a tactic. Like, you too can be a hashtag. You too can do whatever. And you don't even have to do anything to become this. When I say we need to realize our value, I mean it in the sense of actually taking pride in knowing that yes, we belong here, y'all. We do. A lot of us are from here. You're from here, you were born here. You are an American citizen. So therefore, and to be quite honest, our ancestors built this place. And that is true, okay? No, we're not the only inventors or nothing like that, but we built this place. And your history books is not gonna just blatantly say that. Your stuff like that is not gonna just be said because at the end of the day, if you were to tell the real truth about the importance that the African-American is to the country of America, Half of the shit that go on here wouldn't be it. It wouldn't be a thing. And half of the money that they make off of the bullshit that's going on here wouldn't be a thing. Because the best thing they ever taught us was to self-hate ourselves. Honestly. To self have self-hate and hate each other and think that the way that we were going to get better is if we did whatever. My blatant example for everyone who always like it. Y'all don't act like animals and all of a dumb shit. Which I also feel like is what we just place upon what we just place upon um black people at times or whatever the case may be um at the end of the day martin luther king is a great example of how we should be right he was suited up all the time he was a god-fearing man he practiced non-violence um yeah martin martin did this thing and um still shot cold blood the judgment of what people do even though we have the same rights the right is is, is not being taken like at the end of the day it's not being taken okay like because somebody made that argument too oh y'all got rights y'all got the right to this y'all got the right to that but it is obvious that there's still this inequality it's still this inequality at the end of the day this moral inequality, this 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 idea that the value isn't the same at the end of the day. So how do you change it? Let's move on. How do you change it? To me, I'm all for the marching. I'm all for the protest. I've been in my select field. I've been in, in things in college to try to do whatever. And I realized that for me, that's not enough. It's not enough for me, and that's not my avenue. I think our issue also, as a people, is that we try to knock down people's avenues to make our changes, when in reality, we need every different avenue we can get, okay? We need writers to write. We even need the tweeters to tweet. We need those tweets to go viral. We need people to say, you know, this and the third hashtag, and it go viral, because at the end of the day, it's a global social network, and everyone's seeing it. But we also need people to realize how valuable we are. 
in terms of the way to keep this 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 place moving to keep america moving so we need people to really really invest in black business okay but at the same time it's a gradual thing you know you gotta actually we need people to actually try their hardest to get to where they want to be that's gonna make them happy to keep coming to work every day so that you in that in that seat happy trying to make sure that not only do you love yourself and you're making sure that yourself is happy but you see yourself and your other counterparts who are african-american and you want to make that path for them as well and make it better for them we need black educators we need to fund our hbcus and teach our children the real history of what we've been through um and other things outside of what they're teaching the curriculum like even in education period outside of the race race thing they've been they've been ripping and jipping us y'all like like think of it this way a lot of essential things that used to be in the educational system is no longer there because it's easier to it's easier to manipulate and have people depend on somebody if they're uneducated, if they don't know how. So we need to be teaching each other financial literacy. We need to be teaching each other real histories and acknowledging it. The problem is not that we're stuck on it. The problem is that people do not acknowledge. You must acknowledge first in order to even change it. You can't say it, it didn't exist. And I don't mean, yeah, just get over it. Cause that's, that's just like not acknowledging it. So you say, okay, that was a fucked up situation. Okay, like, and you, and I'm not saying that people should apologize, but you have to empathize with um, people when they go through things. So, like, if you think of the Orlando situation, that was tragic. And people were like, oh, that was a hate crime. Yes. And I feel like the, when we are shooting down African-American men and women, um, without really any reason at the end of the day, with a lot of situations, the reasonings are very dumb. Definitely you have the evidence, but whatever. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. But you empathize with those, those people that day in Orlando. We empathize with them. We put aside our moral beliefs. And we felt bad because at the end of the day those were people those were all somebody's children somebody's mother somebody's father somebody's friend lover that's the same with this person that's the same with Alton he was all of that to somebody I watched another video of a white guy who they were trying to detain he got up and started fighting the police he ain't die he got locked up so, to me, you got, we got to attack it from different angles. It got to be basically we rip. Since we are no value to the country, since we don't treat the, us, if, since we're not treated as if we are valued, so we'll just take all our money. We'll take all that stuff. Just take all that. What if we? What if the entertainment business decided they didn't want to give entertainment to, to the big businesses anymore? What if all the artists was like, fuck it. What if all the basketball players said, I'm not playing basketball for y'all entertainment no more? What if, like, what if? Now you don't make your money at the end of the day and you ain't got no fucking TV. People will be upset. And they'd be like, no, because you, you, you don't care. You don't care. It's cool when we doing all that. It's cool to watch. And this is what Jesse was trying to say. That's, this is what Jesse was trying to say. I'm just... I'm just like, uh, and then I and I make and I'm making this video, and I know people are gonna grind me up. I already know it's gonna be black people, white people, all types of people trying to grind me up in this video, and I understand. And it's really hard not to talk or appear to seem um, prejudiced, cause I'm not. I like I always like I keep saying I love all kinds of people. They are always, I don't like bad people. So, and it's good and bad in everyone, but I don't like bad people who blatantly seem like they don't just value all people who are human. At the end of the day, if I was a police officer, 
And we need those too. We need more honest police officers. We need people that are really trying to make sure that they are here to protect us. You know, we need lawyers. We need, and I mean people who don't just want, and the people to stay true to that. Because the thing is, a lot of people go into jobs and they want to help and they have all those thoughts of what I'm saying we need. And then money gets involved and they get greedy and it becomes about them. We, have, we need more people to always think about others. We live here together, y'all. We live here together. So since we live here together, at the end of the day, you we have to think that way. And I just feel like as a, as a spiritual person, as someone who is Christian, who believes, you know, God made all people and, you know, he, love is really what overcomes anything. I feel like we must all love ourselves and then love ourselves enough to know that even though we might physically look different, the one thing we all are, are human. And, and this is supposed to be a free country. This is a place of opportunity. This is supposed to be a place of dream and all this other stuff. So we just really have to come together as a human race people and realize the wrong in this. And realizing if you're not here to realize it, then like Jesse said, you don't need to be talking. If you're not here to recognize and really try to make a difference in what is going on, then you need to keep it moving. Like, point blank, period. Um, so, I, like I said, I think that the way we solve this is by showing how valuable we are. Um, we should continue to protest. We should continue to march. Everyone, we need to realize that everyone has their own part in this and just because it's not the part that you're good at doesn't mean we knock each other down um we gonna have our protesters we're gonna have our people at the forefront we got our photographers we, we gonna need our journalists we gonna need our lawyers we gonna need our police we gonna need and when i say our i mean the people who feel and who know that we are all a human race and this whole killing people and stuff and definitely killing black people and that black lives matter just as much as all lives matter. If that's the case, that's the argument. Yes, all lives do matter. But right now we are blatantly showing that the black life ain't a life that's considered really that valuable to that, that hashtag. So... We need everybody. We need the YouTubers to actually stand up. We need the entertainers to actually stand up. We need um, the movie, the filmmakers. We need the teachers. We need the janitors. We just need everyone to literally stand up and have something to say and show and prove and, and put that in. Like, put that in. Like, maybe you don't go to that uh, restaurant that you know technically is whatever. Like, maybe you don't buy Timberlands or you don't buy whatever. Because the thing is, right now, this is the time we are blatantly being racist. It is blatant racism, like, to a point where racism was alive. People was kind of trying to cover it up. People are blatantly coming out and showing their racism. And at the end of the day, some people, you know, I feel bad because you're taught racism. You're not born that way. That's what you're taught. But at the end of the day, it's still not okay. So I'm gonna leave it there because I done talked for like 22 minutes about that. I done ranted and I already know y'all gonna grind me up. But I don't care. I just felt like I needed to say something. Rest in peace to Alton Sterling. Rest in peace to Sandra Bland. Rest in peace to Trayvon Martin. Rest in peace to Tamir Rice. Rest in peace to Eric Gardner. Rest in peace to all of those who's, who've Mm. whom have lost their lives by the injustice of an officer who is here to protect and serve all of us as a people.